Hi beautiful people, welcome back. So today we're gonna do a recap and a review of The Real Housewives of Potomac Season 7, Episode 10, titled Cleaning Up the Mess. So okay, the ladies have come back from their trip to the MIA. They've come back from their trip to Miami and everybody's at their respective homes. Uh, we check in on everybody and then we um, landed on Giselle and Robin doing their podcast. So they're wrapping up and they are making plans to do a live show. And um, they talk with their friend and assistant who's helping them to get things in order. And then, you know, they let her go. And then uh, Giselle asks Robin, you know, I heard what happened after I went home that you guys were cool at the club. And so Robin already, you know, I guess told her a little bit more. And she told her that she's actually going to meet up with Candace because she feels that her and Candace need to have a talk. So um, they left it at that. And then we head over to Chris and Candace's house. We see them get there planning about a backyard party to celebrate um, Candace actually getting her master's in business administration. Congratulations, Candace. So they are planning to have a party and they are looking at the backyard of how to set up everything. They talk about it a little bit, then they go back inside and Candace let Chris know that uh, she's with, she hasn't seen her cycle. So, you know, they are trying to have a baby and Chris was very excited. So, you know, they left that on a good note. They talked about that for a little bit. Now we head over to Karen's house and we get to see Matt. Um, Matt is a friend and an ex-assistant of Karen. We've seen him come around. Just like how we see Cal come around Giselle, we see Matt come around Karen a lot. So now we come over like, why is Matt here? First of all, when Giselle went over to Karen's house one time, she made Giselle take off her shoes. Why is it you didn't let Matt take off his shoes when he came in and walked on your white carpet, Karen? That wasn't cool. Same rules applies to everyone. You don't come in this room with your outside shoes. So, okay, they sit down and they're talking. And we're finding out, why is Matt here? So now we find out that Karen is about to steal another one of her friend's ideas. Remember how she took the candle, candle idea from um, Wendy, where she's talking about uh, my candle is three wick, not a one wick candle. So, so... She's about to take the idea of the podcast away from Giselle and Robin. But I don't think you're going to be successful on this one, Karen. So she is planning to do a live show. I don't know what is she... And then Matt is coming up with all these ideas, these grand ideas. And it needs to be grand because she's the grand dom. And I'm like, where is this going? This, just, this plan just sounds like it's not even going to come to fruition because... The way he was going on and the plans that they have for Karen's live show. I'm like, when did Karen... I know she has... I think she has a YouTube channel. I'm not sure. But when is this live show going to happen? It must be on her YouTube channel because it's not going to be as big as Giselle and um and Robin. They got that one unlocked. Their podcast is really good. They've been dom nominated for awards. So I don't know where Karen is going with that. So that's why Matt was there to go over an idea of Karen having a live show and he's telling her all the segments they could do and all the guests they could put, bring this musical guest is going to do three songs and all. I'm like okay enough is enough so we left them there talking about that and then we see Wendy we see uh, Mike pick her up from the airport and she lets us know that she's coming back from Chicago she went right after the Miami trip to Chicago because she was a keynote speaker at a uh, speaking engagement in Chicago so she's telling her husband, you know, that she really needs to slow down. And she is, I believe she is not battling, but she has a kidney stone right now that she needs to pass. She was going to wait to pass it, but then she decides that, no, she's going to actually go ahead and have the surgery. And then Eddie is telling her, you really need to pay more attention to your health. That should be your number one priority. You're juggling too much. You know, the same speech that he's been giving her again and again. So, all right. That we've done with, with um, Wendy and Eddie. Now we have the meeting with Candace and Robin. They are meeting at a restaurant at the bar. They're having lunch at the bar. And as soon as they meet, we see um, Robin crying, only to find out that 
her hairdresser that we've seen in the show over the past few years, uh, um, her sister and her her sister and her um, sister's husband passed away in a tragic accident. So Robin knows all these people. So of course it's going to hit home. So she is hurting for her friend. And um, she was crying. And uh, Candace was comforting her. And then, you know, I guess she calmed her down for a little bit. And then they talked about what was going on with them. Candace let her know that she is really sorry because she considers... Robin, like a sister, a really, really good friend. And then she's just apologizing for the way things went down in Miami. And I think they're back on a good note. According to Robin, she said, you know, seeing, you know, what happened to her friends and her family, that she realized that life is just so short that, you know, you can't be holding grudges like that. So let's just move on with everything. So that was um, the meeting with Candace and Robin. Now we have Mia and Gordon. They're opening. They're doing the grand opening for the chiropractic center. They're opening a location in DC where they're from. And, you know, Karen came to give her support. She let us know that they have 14 offices and then they have, um, franchises of a different, another eight. So she's letting us know that something else they were looking at some other business deals and, those fell through. The producers came in the confessional and asked her, do you want to get into details about the deal that fell through? And she's like, no, I don't want to talk about it. You know, all these lawyers and stuff. I'm kind of tired of these lawyers. But as you know, before the show, just before the show started, Mia went on social media and let everyone know that her and um, Gordon was no longer working with the chiropractic center. Um, he was removed as the CEO and they are haven't really discussed any more about it. But it was nice for Karen to show up. And Karen kind of asked her about her mom. And then Karen backed off. She's like, well, you know what? This is your day. Let's not even talk about it. I'll just, you know, check in to make sure everything is good with you and her. And that was nice to see. So I guess down the line, we'll find out more about what's going on with Mia and Gordon and their business uh, ventures. And maybe they'll come out and give us more in detail. Then we have Ashley and Uncle Lump. She went over to visit Uncle Lump. They're, I think they're having a little barbecue and stuff. They're outside. And we only see Ashley with baby Dylan. She doesn't have Dean with her. And everybody's like, where's Dean? So she let them know that her and Michael had a big argument just before coming over. He wanted to spend time alone with Dean. And uh, told her to take Dylan and go. And she let her family know that she's afraid to actually live alone, like get a house and live alone. So I think Ashley's like kind of backing out of purchasing a home. Like she's really going to stay in the apartment and everybody's saying that her storyline doesn't make sense, that it's fake and they don't see how it's going to move forward. But Hey, it'll unravel eventually. I mean, maybe in season or season seven, we're in maybe in season nine, she'll come out and say, Hey, got you. <laughs> But she's doing a really good job, job in maneuvering it this season. We get to hear about Michael. We get to see Ashley still on the show and she still has a storyline going. Because according to her, her and Michael are getting ready to go through a divorce. So back to her and her family. They're telling her, no, you are not alone. You have your whole family here to support you. And you need to believe that. So she was crying a little bit. And, you know, her uncle Lump and his wife and her auntie was trying to calm her down. Now we have... Candice and her mom, she goes to pick up her mom at the airport. Her mom is in town to celebrate her party, to celebrate her getting her degrees and having a party. And she let her mom know that, you know, she may be pregnant. And everybody was excited about that. So that was a quick one with Ashley and her mom. No, it wasn't really quick. They showed a part where they were looking at the venue in the backyard and there happened to be a snake in the backyard. Uh, Ashley's mom was like, I thought you said... You said that Giselle was a comment. What is she doing? Oh my God, that is so not nice. So that was what um, Candace's mom had to say regarding Giselle and the snake that they saw in the backyard. Now we have Giselle and Cal. Hey Cal, it's always good to see you when you're on there. You know, that's a really, really good friend of Giselle. He's been around since season one. He is there for Giselle and the girls. 
So it's really good to see him whenever he comes on. He doesn't come on, you know, at least once per season we get to see Cal. So I guess he's cool with that. So we're at the venue now. It's the day of the Sweet 16 birthday party. You know, remember the girls told Giselle, like, you know, I don't want you inside. But um, Giselle, what she did was found a venue where she could have two separate areas, one for the girls and their party, and then her and her friend. So they're at the venue. They arrive at the girls. They approve of how it is. Um, they hug Cal and everybody goes into their respective areas every now and then you'll see Giselle run inside and you know mingle with the girls a little bit then she'll come back to her group because she invited all the ladies to lunch or or dinner or whatever the event space was for and um then we see Jamal came in their dad came in to celebrate sweet 16 that's a big deal so their dad came in to celebrate with them as well they gave a little speech which was cute they took their pictures and it was just a good day overall it was just nice to see everybody having a good time now we are at candace's party which is the final scene of this episode we have everybody arriving we have candace go upstairs and change we have chris fill in and greet wherever he could and um now we are eating you know it's a pic- kind of barbecue picnic style so everybody's outside they're eating and we have Robin, Ray, and Karen sitting. And Karen goes to Robin. So Robin, Ray and I have a lot of free time. You know, I could help you with your planning. So what is the wedding? So Robin is like, well, it's going to be really intimate. And there's not going to be a lot of people there. So she's like, so we're not invited? Robin is like, nope. So of course, Karen gets in the confessional and like, mm-hmm. Yeah, we know why we're not invited. <laughs> you keep dragging me to your business. I don't want to be in your business, but y'all keep dragging me to your business. <laughs> So Karen didn't like that, the fact that she wasn't part of um, Robin's wedding planning. She's like, we're still in the planning stages. That's the thing. When you get engaged, everybody wants to know when is the date, when is that. As soon as you, you know, they hear that you're getting married, they want to know the exact date. You don't even have time to enjoy the engagement. They want to know when are you getting married. So that was a little conversation between the two. At one point, Wendy came over because she was at the party and she's like, Robin, we really need to talk. I know that last time, you know, we were drunk talking, but I need to know, are we really good? And then Robin um, told her exactly, you know, what exactly she was upset about. Wendy actually apologized to her and she received it. And then Wendy's like, so you don't have nothing for me? She's like, what do you want from me? He's like, I want an apology. Robin was like, but I already apologized. Like, do it again. (laughs) I'm like, oh my God. So she did, and she meant it genuinely. So they hugged it out and stuff. So they're on good, good, um, good terms now. So Wendy's good with Robin. Wendy's not good with Mia. I don't know if they're gonna work it out. Now, at one point we see Ray talking to Chris and telling Chris that, you know, even though you you know, you say you didn't do anything just to make everything cool. Why don't you just apologize to Giselle for the way she feels? And Chris walked away from him, but later on you see him getting pissed off. He couldn't leave his house because he was doing, he's the chef of the event, so he had to be there. And at one point he's like, there's so many people in this. Of course he used an expletive. He's like, there's so many people in this house. Oh my God. So I think he wanted the party to be over I don't think he wanted to actually disrespect Ray on camera, so he walked away from him, but he was upset. He's like, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know why they're talking about I did something wrong. Of course, the cameras were capturing, you know, his um, his mood, his attitude and everything. But I could understand why Chris was upset. You I mean, you're in my house telling me to go apologize for something I didn't do? Come on. So that was where the... Um, no, that's not where the episode ended. So we had to have the talk so Karen pulls Candace to the side and Candace like you know what Karen I really honestly did not remember saying that about you stepping out on Ray so Karen was like so who so who reminded you is that the producers <laughs> so I'm like, Candace you know you remember saying that stuff she said the producers it caught me talking to the devil so I guess the devil is Ashley so she apologized to Karen. She's like, I am so sorry I did that. Karen's like, all right, so you own your truth. That's okay. I'm cool with that. You apologize. Let's move. Karen, 
Karen is a is cool. She's like, whatever. As long as you acknowledge what you did, apologize for it, we can move on. So that's where we were with Karen and Candice. And that's where the episode ended. So this episode was just a way of um, touching base with everybody who was going on in their family. I think it was filmed around the summertime, of course, because we had all these outdoor activities. So I think that's when it was filmed. So that is where we are with the recap and the review. It was an overall good episode, in my opinion. You know, celebrating everybody's achievements. You know, mending fences, as they say in the title, cleaning up the mess. That's what this episode was about. It was messy in Miami, and now we are home, and we are making sure that we take care of business. So that is my recap and my review of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 7, Episode 10, titled Cleaning Up the Mess. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you are listening to this on my podcast, Reality TV Space with Georgia Denise, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, download and share this episode. And until next time, take care of yourselves and your families. Bye-bye.